Hello, how's it going? In today's video, I'm covering Black Rock Mountain and the first Siege of Stormwind from Chronicle Volume 2. So let's go! Firstly, a few weeks after the ambush in Lakeshire, the Horde managed to take the town anyway, so I guess that whole thing was a waste of time. But Gul'dan had a few concerns after the ambush on Blackhand. Turns out, humans fight kinda hard when they're outnumbered, so he was pretty convinced an assault on Stormwind City wouldn't be as easy as the rest of the Horde believed. Plus, the Horde was divided. Some of its most powerful clans still remained on Draenor, and years of war, famine and hunger still took its toll on most of the Horde. Also, Gul'dan had recently learned of Medivh's defence of Stormwind against the Gurubashi Trolls, and he'd gained some knowledge on the history of the Guardian and the Council of Tirisfal. This Medivh bloke was really mysterious. Did he really want the Horde to conquer Azeroth? Or does he have some ulterior motive? What if he decides to wipe out the Orcs just like he did to the Gurubashi? But then, an idea struck Gul'dan. Back on Draenor, he'd empowered the Horde before they'd conquered Karabor, using the planet's elements and infusing their energies into the Orcs. This planet was teeming with elemental spirits, and they were much stronger. Shadow Council spies had reported massive elemental activity near a volcano northwest of Redridge, a place called Black Rock Mountain, which is weirdly coincidental, considering one of the clans also had that name for a completely unrelated reason. But anyway, Cho'Gol confirmed this report, however he failed to mention that he'd also discovered that the local spirits were in league with the Old Gods. Classic Cho'Gol. The Shadow Council secretly travelled to Black Rock Mountain. Their intention was to subjugate the inhabitants. But things did not go well. They'd never dealt with this level of raw elemental might. The first couple of warlocks who attempted to dominate the elements bloody exploded. Also, there were Dark Iron Dwarves hanging about. For centuries, these dwarves had served as Ragnaros' loyal servants. Whenever a Shadow Council warlock would trespass too deep into the mountain, the Dark Irons would attack. The Shadow Council nearly incited Ragnaros and his minions to all-out war, but Cho'Gol stepped in and decided to mediate. He ventured into the mountain, his connection to the Old Gods allowed him access without trouble, and he had a really long conversation with the Dark Irons and Ragnaros' elemental lieutenants. And they reached an agreement. The Old Gods really liked what the Horde was doing. In fact, they wanted to help, but they had no intention of granting power to Legion puppets. Sargeras and his army stood in direct opposition of the powers of the Void. However, they did provide the Shadow Council with a small refuge, Blackrock Spire, near the top of the mountain. If the Warlocks stayed up there and didn't try any funny business, Ragnaros and his followers would leave them alone. Gul'dan was actually a little bit disappointed that his plan to dominate the elements wasn't happening, but he was pleased that Cho'Gol had proven his skills as an effective diplomat. Obviously he didn't know the Ogre's true intentions, otherwise he probably wouldn't have been pleased at all. This Blackrock Spire place would come in handy. Tensions were rising between Gul'dan and Blackhand, and the Shadow Council desperately needed a new secret headquarters, and a spire near the top of a volcano sounded super awesome cool. Meanwhile, by this point, Brightwood, Westfall, and Redridge Mountains were now under the Horde's control. It was time to strike Stormwind City. Blackhand wasn't surprised when Gul'dan informed him the mission to Blackrock Mountain was a failure. Of course they failed. Bloody idiots. The Horde doesn't need elemental power to crush Stormwind anyway. Thousands of Horde soldiers flooded through Elwyn Forest and formed siege lines outside the city. They surrounded the stronghold, cutting off all access except for by sea. I mean, what are they going to do in the sea anyway? Probably nothing to worry about. The War Chief then gave Kilrog and Cho'Gol the honour of leading their respective clans on the first assault. The Horde bombarded the city's walls with siege engines through the night, and at dawn, the Bleeding Hollow and Twilight's Hammer clans got started. They charged the battlements whilst Warlocks used Fellfire on the city's defenders. A lot of humans died. Loads of them. Blackhand observed and was like, bloody hell, this will be over by lunchtime. But his stupid smug face soon turned into a frown as he learned that the Horde's rear lines were under attack. Lothar had led the lion's share of Stormwind's knights around the Horde by sea. The Orcs' rearguard were caught completely by surprise as the knights smashed into them. The Bleeding Hollow and Twilight's Hammer decided it was probably a good idea to leave the front lines and rejoin the Horde to help. But this allowed Stormwind's main gates to fly open and a buttload of soldiers from the city to pour out in a counterattack. The Orcs had no way of fighting against this two-pronged assault, so they cheesed it. And once again, Blackhand was bloody furious. This guy really doesn't like being embarrassed. He very nearly executed Kilrog and Cho'Gol, but didn't because he suspected their clans wouldn't be too happy if he did. For now, the Horde could only withdraw back to their holdings in Redridge and figure out a new plan. And we're leaving it there! In the next Volume 2 video, We'll find out why and how Stormwind was so prepared for the attack, and we're back with Medivh and Khadgar. As always, thanks very much to those of you who support the channel as patrons. Links in the description if anyone's interested in supporting the channel in that way. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks, and all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!